Well, the posties are on strike today, the biggest strike in the UK uh, since 2009, over 115,000. Um, after delivering record-breaking votes, 97.7% uh, voted for strike action in a 77% turnout um, because they've lost complete confidence in the leadership of the company. Uh, the company posted record profits of £758 million uh, back in April. Um, they chose to give away over £400 million to shareholders. Uh, they rewarded themselves, the senior management team, uh, with huge bonuses, apparently for actually achieving their financial targets. Um, and at the same time, they then uh, imposed 2% pay on the workforce. Um, didn't negotiate it, chose to impose that. Sitting alongside that, we've got a second ballot. Today is about pay, um, but we've also balloted our members for strike action over change um, because the company walked away uh, from an agreement that we made only 18 months ago. We agreed every single bit of automation, every single bit of technology. Uh, we agreed a strategy for the future that was about growing Royal Mail. Uh, and what we believe is happening in the background of this dispute, and we're accusing the company of that now, it is that they've been totally dishonest in the way they've conducted negotiations leading into this. Um, and we believe they're having secret talks with a private equity firm in Luxembourg called Vaser um, to bring about a takeover of Royal Mail. Uh, we wrote to the company a couple of days back saying that, and lo and behold, unbelievably, the day after we wrote, they haven't answered our questions yet, um, the government and the company put out a statement to the city saying that they were investigating under a particular act this company. So there's a lot more that, to this dispute than meets the eye. Um, I think we'll get fantastic support from the public because I think postal workers have a unique bond. Uh, they do own trust on the doorstep. They have a relationship with customers that goes back many years and you know we're in this fight to get our members to pay the they deserve. The company can afford to put more on the table uh, and you know we're not going to agree a change program that isn't modernisation. Um, it's about bringing in P&O style, railway worker style uh, terms and conditions. And it's about basically turning Royal Mail, uh, a great iconic UK company, into just another parcel courier, uh, but as a gig economy employer. Um, and sorry, we, we, can't, we can't make that happen. Look, would you yeah, think I know. That, do you think yeah. people would have thought a Range Rover would be beeping to support a strike? <laughs> yeah, it's very insistent in showing their support. Yeah, it's yeah, but that, that, it? that's the, the point. Yeah, the, are... the point I'm making is that you know I think postal workers will be out speaking to their customers, and I think sitting alongside this, we're very aware that the cost of living crisis is horrendous for millions and millions of people, uh, for many of our members who will be using food banks. Um, so we've got to do something about it. And, you know, I think we can launch on the back of these type of strikes uh, real strong support from the public and expose what's actually going on at the top of Royal Mail, which I believe is a kind of moral crisis in corporate governance of UK companies. Just two bits here. So the first thing you said about being sold to a, a separate firm in Luxembourg, do you think that the British public are aware that they're once publicly owned Royal Mail is now being, you know, funneled out as or, or sold off? Do you think anyone's aware of that? No, I don't, I don't think they are. Um, and I think that we weren't aware of it until uh, a couple of days back where we just, we've known for some time that the actions of the company, uh, you, you get a feel when people are having you over. You know, we're experienced people. Our members understand what's really going on. I mean, some of their feelings toward the leadership of the company uh, is really anger at the, at the highest level. And, you know, I think that's been born out of what's happened over the last six months. Now, to add fuel to the fire, when we write that letter saying to the company, we'll meet you anytime, any place, anywhere, we want to also get reassurances from you that you're not in secret talks. All of a sudden, um, you know, the government and the company put out this statement to the city 24 hours later. That's no coincidence. When you talk about your 
proposals using food banks. Can you talk to me a bit more about that? Yeah, well, I mean, postal workers uh, don't earn huge amounts of money. Uh, they've got more secure jobs and higher basic rates of pay uh, than a lot of the courier workers that we compete against. And obviously, we we set the benchmark uh, for this sector, and we want workers to level up. Um, but what the company are doing uh, will drive more and more of our members into food banks. They're talking about bringing in P&O style terms and conditions um, where new entrants would be on 15% less than what a postal worker earns already. A postal worker uh, in, uh, across the UK earns about 20, just over £24,500 um, and obviously there's different allowances in London, people get a bit more and stuff like that but you know these are not huge sums of money but they're a lot more than what the competitors are uh, and what's clearly happening here is that the company want to take the postal workers pay down to the rest of the sector and it's time now that you know unions came together uh, and we delivered uh, the race to the top uh, and we do that through fighting for a new deal for working people across the country we also do it through campaigns like enough's enough and one of the things that our union uh, believes in is that you've got to help your members in work but you've also got to help them out of work and it's time to see trade unionism in its widest uh, possible way. What do you mean by that, out of work? Well, what I mean by that is is that we have to have something to say about soaring energy bills. Right. You know, we're part of the Enough's Enough campaign. We're a founding member of that campaign. Uh, and we believe that uh, the, the energy cap should actually go back to what it was before they increased it last April. Um, it's interesting that Labour suddenly shifted a bit. Not enough, uh, far from enough. Uh, and we've got to put the pressure on. So what I mean by that is that you help your members and their terms and conditions and their living standards, both by directly engaging with the employer uh, and taking the employer on where necessary, but you also do it in wider social campaigns uh, with other trade unions and other community organisations. Yeah. You know, one last thing, the one thing I find interesting is that posties are basically community workers, right? They talk to a lot of people on the doorstep, they know their community yeah. really well. Do you think that they are seeing the harsh end of the cost of living crisis already? Have they reported like speaking to people who are worried about it or panicked about the winter ahead? Yeah, when you, when you talk to our members, I mean, they are absolutely part of the communities that they serve. And most of them live in the same areas uh, where they work. Uh, so they will understand completely what's going on. They see it every single day. And people will be talking about that in places like where we are now. Um, you know, the level of poverty that you're starting to see uh, that's been decades in the making. I mean, it isn't just this cost of living crisis. I, I'm firmly of the view that we've all got to realise, and I think the people in the UK are now realising it, that it doesn't matter what the crisis is. You know, it can be the 2008 financial crisis, it can be the pandemic, it can be the cost of living crisis, it can be the climate emergency. Unless working people stand together, um, it's always going to be working people that pay the price for the errors uh, of others, including governments who are only going to look after the people that they serve. So, you know, it's time for massive change. These disputes, I think, are getting the level of support because of how tough our members uh, uh, you know, are feeling at the moment and their living standards are going down. Now, you know, this is at a time when the cost of living, they're having the budget for losing strike pay and they're having to budget for the cost of living crisis. So that shows the strength of resolve amongst our members. And now, you know, they feel that they're being treated with total uh, and utter contempt.